Pseudomembranous Colitis Introduction It is also known as antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Pseudomembranous colitis is an acute inflammatory disease of the F. colon caused by antibiotic-induced superinfection, resulting in colonic edema in mild cases, but in severe cases, it can lead to the formation of nodular, loosely attached raised exudative plaques, 2 to 5 millimeters in size. Upon coalescence of these plaques, a pseudomembrane over colonic mucosa is formed, thus giving this condition its name. In approximately 20% of cases, involvement of the cecum and proximal colon occurs. Increased age, hospitalization, and immunosuppression are known risk factors associated with this condition. Etiopathogenesis Commensal organisms in our gut are protective for us as they inhibit growth of pathogenic bacteria by competitively inhibiting nutrition for them and also secreting enzyme-like bacteriocin, which kills the pathogenic organisms. It's very crucial to protect the growth of commensals and keep them in check. With the development of an enormous number of antimicrobial drugs and wide-scale usage across the globe resulted in harm to the commensals in our gut, which open ways for pathogenic organisms to grow and cause superinfection. Specifically, overgrowth of Clostridium difficile, resulting in the production of large amounts of toxins. These toxins bind to the mucosa, attack membranes and microfilaments of mucosal cells, producing a lot of damage by causing inflammation and hemorrhage, cellular necrosis. They also interfere with mucosal protein synthesis and increase peristalsis. As a result of such extensive damage, there is denudation of epithelial cells. A fibronecrotic gray-yellow plaque gets formed. Primary culprit of such an extensive reaction is Clostridium difficile. Other organisms like Clostridium perfringens, Salmonella, and Staphylococcus aureus can also cause this condition. Use of drugs like third-generation cephalosporins is the most common cause. Other drugs like clindamycin, aminopenicillins, and fluoroquinolones are also associated in a decreasing manner. Clinical Features Symptoms in most cases begin 3 to 9 days after the start of antibiotics. Clinical severity ranges from mild diarrhea to toxic megacolon, and in some severe cases, even to colonic perforation. General symptoms include profuse watery and foul-smelling diarrhea, abdominal cramps and tenderness in the right lower quadrant, and increase in temperature. Diagnosis a complete blood count report shows leukocytosis. Hypoalbuminemia is a common finding. Stool culture and stool assay for Clostridium difficile toxins can be performed. However, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, dotoxin A, and terocytoxin is more efficient but less sensitive. Plain abdominal radiograph may show mucosal edema and nodular hostral thickening. Computed tomography scan and barium enema also help in identifying mucosal lesions. Flexible sigmoidoscopy, rigid proctosigmoidoscopy, are diagnostic in most cases. Histopathological evidence. Grossly raised exudative plates are seen with a yellowish pseudomembrane. Microscopy reveals a classic volcano pattern of fibropurulent exudate emerging from underlying mucosa. Treatment. Drug of choice for this condition earlier was metronidazole, then focus shifted to oral vancomycin, but as per recent updates, fidaxomycin has become the drug of choice as it's known to cause maximum prevention from relapses. Note, vancomycin is not orally absorbed due to its huge structure and is given by intravenous route in most conditions wherever indicated, but in pseudomembranous colitis it is given orally and it works by acting locally in the gut. In the case of refractory patients, the last resort remains bezlotoximab. It is a monoclonal antibody against toxins of Clostridium difficile. Image-based discussion. Here is a gross appearance of the colon from a patient with pseudomembranous colitis. The pseudomembranes are yellow or off-white raised plaques, 0.2 to 2 centimeters in diameter, which are scattered over fairly normal appearing intervening mucosa. Here is an endoscopic appearance of Clostridioides, formerly Clostridium, difficile-induced pseudomembranous colitis. The left panel shows scattered pseudomembranes visible on top of the mucosa, being separated by areas of relatively normal mucosa. Some of the lesions have a red halo. 
The right panel shows yellow pseudomembrane circumferentially covering the entire colonic mucosa. Here is a transabdominal ultrasound of the colon in a patient with pseudomembranous colitis. A characteristic feature is the asymmetric hypoechoic bowel wall thickening with loss of wall layer structure and cobblestone-like or pseudopolypus picture of the mucosa in the absence of a visible lumen. Depending upon the degree of inflammation, a hyperechogenic reaction of the mesentery may be seen. Ultrasonography of lymphomatous infiltration of the intestinal wall may display a similar image. Plain film of the abdomen demonstrates marked thickening of the wall of the ascending colon, producing a thumb printing pattern. This appearance is seen in all forms of colitis. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.